This video is going to be a follow-on to my Polygon API overview and so if you haven't seen that you're not familiar with Polygon you probably want to watch that one first but in this video I'm going to be going through an overview of how to get options data which is just a little bit different than getting regular stock data so I'm going to uh, just start up with a notebook and uh, do some imports here I'm gonna be putting the data I get into a data frame so I'm gonna import pandas and of course I'm gonna import the rest client from the polygon helper library and then I'm gonna set up or instantiate a client object here and that's the same way you would do it uh, for a regular security the difference here with options is that they have many strike prices they have calls and puts and the symbols are a little bit more complicated than say just getting the quote for the S&P 500 ETF all right so I'm going to go ahead and go to Yahoo Finance here and take a look at these different option symbols okay so I already called up s and 500 ETF here. I'm going to click into options and then I'm going to find something that's roughly at the money here. So something that definitely is active. So 575 seems good. And all right, I need that whole symbol. All right, so I'm using Yahoo Finance because they give you the whole symbol and, and this is what Polygon wants to use. All right, so I'll just copy that and then go back to my notebook and I'm going to then just get some data so we can take a look at it and then I will put it in a data frame. Okay, so I'll call the client and then uh, I'm going to use get ags. All right, this is one of the methods that you have uh, available when you're using the free account, right? So they have lots of different methods here, but not all of them are available under the free account. All right, so I'm gonna use this one, get ags, and then I'm going to put in the symbol and when you're dealing with an option you have to tell it you're dealing with an option follow it with a colon and then I'm going to paste in that symbol that I got off of Yahoo Finance okay after that the the structure of get ags is the same for options as it is for regular stocks so I'm going to give it a time span all right, and I'll just get daily. All right, uh, it doesn't make a lot of sense for options probably to get it down at the second level. Uh, if it's an active contract, then you might consider getting it by the minute so you could see the behavior there. All right, but I'm just gonna get uh, the daily quotes here and then I'm gonna have to put in a multiplier and uh, how frequent do I want it every day, right? Every five days, every 10 days, whatever. All right, but I'm putting it for every day and then a from date and a to date. All right, so I'll get about a month's worth of data. Okay, and so I have to actually stop before the current date. So I'm making this on October 10th and I have to stop uh, the day before because okay October 10th isn't completed yet and so they can't give you the end of the day data there and so that would just throw an error all right let's see what we get back when I make this call okay so you can see what it gives you is a list and a list of a bunch of these ag objects so going back a month I guess the S&P 500 was lower than it is right now and so we can see that oh it didn't have a tremendous amount of volume and then as I come forward we can see that oh it, it has a, a lot more volume as it gets closer to the money all right so I'm gonna go from there and we're gonna transform it into a data frame it's more usable the the list object that you get is kind of hard to work with so uh, yes I can get the zero item and the zero item here is an egg and then I can just sort of ask it, oh, what's the open on that egg? What's the high on that egg? And that kind of stuff. It's not as useful as, say, being in a data frame where then I can uh, do filtering and, and that kind of thing uh, easily. Okay. All right. So what I'm going to do then is store this in a variable. All right. So I'll just copy and paste this call. And then I am going to write a function that transforms any ag object that I decide to download into a data frame. Okay, so we'll just call that make data frame. All right, and we'll have to pass in some ags. All right, and inside here I'm going to make a list, a temporary list to store the data in, 
and then I'm going to loop over each of these ag items in that ags list and put it into a dictionary and then uh, transform that dictionary into a data frame. So it's a little cumbersome. That's why I'm writing a function to sort of trivialize this fairly code intensive manipulation. All right, so I'm gonna take my data, append to it, I'm gonna append a dictionary and then I'm just going to go over each of the data points in an ag that I want to save. And I will just start with timestamp. I'll get the open, low, high, close, volume, and the timestamp and the transactions. All right, I don't really care too much about this is the volume weighted average price. Okay, so that's the initial step, get stuff into a dictionary, and then from the dictionary, we will just uh, create a data frame. So I'm gonna reuse that variable. Okay, so now it's in a data frame. Uh, the timestamp is uh, displayed here in milliseconds. So I'm gonna do a transformation on that, and uh, I'm going to set the actual date as the index. Okay, and then the uh, the date column is now extra, so I'm going to uh, get rid of that. All right, and I have to tell it to do it in place. And now I have my data frame. All right, and I think we'll all agree that oh, rather than writing this code every time you want to download and transform data, we'll just call this function. Okay, so we'll, when we're done, return the data frame. All right, so let's try it out here. And yeah, pretty quickly we get our, our, our data frame. All right, and there's gonna be some limitations as to how far back in history I can go with the free account on options. All right, so uh, I didn't quite get all the way back to uh, September 9th here. All right, but we get a, a, a pretty good idea what's going on with uh, that particular strike that's currently at the money. All right, and then the other thing you have with options is, wow, you have lots of strike prices, right? So there's a strike for every dollar in uh, S&P 500, at least up until uh, we get pretty far away from the uh, at the money options, right, where they spread out into $5 increments, and as we get farther away, they spread out into $10 increments, and then 20, and like that, okay? So what if you wanna get uh, the uh, five calls around the strike price, right? So right in the middle, maybe the 575, and then the previous uh, four or five strikes, and the subsequent four or five strikes. How would you do something like that? And again, we're limited on the free account. We can only make one, uh, sorry, five calls in a minute. So uh, if I wanna get those 10 options, each one of them is a separate call. Uh, I have to do it over uh, two minutes, right? So uh, I'm, I'm just gonna get uh, four or five of them. Uh, and then you can decide, uh, depending on what you're doing, whether or not you should uh, you know, pay for a, a subscription to uh, Polygon. All right, so I'm gonna use a, uh, I'm gonna use a different stock here, I guess. Well, let's use Google. All right, so same thing, I'm gonna go into options. I'm going to get somewhere around 165, I guess. All right, and with Google, we can see, okay, it's not at every dollar, it's at every two and a half dollars. All right, so there's some rules about how options get quoted, what the contracts are that are available. All right, and for S&P 500, uh, they're giving you one dollar increments and for uh, Google, they're giving you 250. All right, so a lot of stocks might be five or 10. Uh, it depends on what the stock's trading at. All right, so let's see how we can do something like this. First thing I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna get the uh, closing price for Google yesterday. All right, I'll use that client object. I'm gonna use a slightly different endpoint. I'm gonna get daily open close ag. 
All right, I'm going to get it for yesterday. I said this video, I'm making it on October 10th. So October 9th is yesterday for me. And then I'll just peel off the clothes, right? But we can see that, oh, that syntax is a lot more compact. If all I want is the closing price, right? Then something like this where I have to put in a time span, a multiplier, and a from, and a two. And uh, 163.06, all right? So uh, I'm going to use that as a basis for the 250 increments around, say, 160. All right, so I'll write a quick helper function here, and uh, I'm gonna round it to the nearest five. I'm gonna pass in a price, and then I'm gonna set a base, or a default base of five, and I'm just gonna return. Okay, and so we'll use this as the starting point for the options I'm interested in. All right, and I'll do, see what we get. Okay, so 165, so I'm gonna go down to 162, 160, uh, 157, 50, and like that. Okay, so I'm going to store this in a variable, say this is where we're gonna start, and I am going to call this my strikes. And I'll use a list comprehension here. Okay, so we got every 250. Uh, if we want to go down and up, so the strikes around that 165, right? I can set a different range here. So I can start at a negative five and go to 10 and Go by increments of one, see what that gets us. All right, so that gets us down to 152.50. All right, all the way up to one, uh, 187. So we'll just adjust it a little bit. Okay, so I want those strikes. Okay, so now we need to transform these into uh, something that we can pass into the API and it can actually be able to go and find that strike price. So I'll set a variable, call it symbols. All right, it'll be a list comprehension again. And uh, I'm gonna go back to uh, Yahoo Finance here and get the symbol. And okay, when I opened it up, I was uh, getting the uh, the daily option here. So I don't really want that. I want the, uh, the regular uh, third Friday of uh, October here. All right, so I'll go get it for the 18th. And then I just need, right, the beginning, Goog 24, 10, 18, C. So I'll use my F string again, and I'll start with the O. It's Goog 24, 10, 18, and it's a call. And then I will concatenate onto that the strike times 1,000. All right, as a zero decimal float. And I'll do that for every strike in strikes. See what we get. Okay, and we can just kind of confirm that, oh yeah, that is a real uh, option symbol over here. Right, I'll go down to 152.50 and right, 24, 10, 18, call, zero, zero. I'm missing the leading zeros there. All right, so we'll just prepend those. All right, so with that done, we should be able to actually go and get the prices at least from yesterday for uh, four or five of these. And so uh, here are all of my data points for every one of those uh, options. Okay, and then, yep, we could run this through the function we wrote earlier and get a data frame and then do something useful with it. All right, so I'm gonna make this notebook available on uh, GitHub and uh, it'll be available from a link in the video. And uh, I hope that helps you get started using Polygon REST API to get option data.